Hey everyone, this is my Patreon proud reaction to the 14th episode of Love Hina. So, in the last episode, it was a little bit of Shinobu focus along with some Sue. And pretty much the theme here was friendship and kissing, primarily Yuri kissing and Yuri friendship. Which is, which was great, I mean I liked it a lot. Uh, Shinobu didn't actually get to kiss Kentaro, who was kind of what was her main goal, but she did get to kiss Sue, which personally I'm a bigger fan of. I think that's that matches her a little bit better. Uh, not that I have a Yuri bias or anything, just I think that works out, you know, overall better. And yeah, that really was the episode. I think uh, also had some Tama stuff, like Tom was the girl that the one unimportant, un unimportant character kisses, which that's fine, you know, Tama's obviously a big Yuri enthusiast, so, you know, best sort of right there. So let's watch the next episode and see what this anime has in store for us this episode. Three, two, one, play. Glad you guys are happy to see me. Every episode. Even though you probably get those same looks to everyone who watches that show, but, you know, I'll believe what I want to believe in that regard. Soon as how to handle a banana. And Kitsuna knows how to stretch. Naro knows how to spin cutely. And they all know how to sunbathe on a roof. And Tom knows how to fly, which is the most impressive of all the things I've mentioned this episode. <laughs> Turtles can't typically fly, so... I guess that's the power of Yuri Tama's levy in there. I mean, I know Yuri physics are quite powerful, like Sakura Trick had that in the first episode where the two main characters did some fancy flip through the air to land on another platform. So yeah, the power of Yuri defies physics is what I'm saying. Because it's like the power of love and friendship except, like, multiplied by 10. Oh. That sounds about right. I don't know, did building giant robots have anything to do with it? All the repairs, so all the food. <laughs> uh, well, have less parties, problem solved. Okay, well, you might as well even live at that point. Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, keeps in that pay up. <laughs> that look. Collective responsibility, but that includes me. I mean, I'm sure Kitsune could come up with some ways to make money. Naru could maybe do some more idling stuff. <laughs> well, if he did, it's your fault for constantly hitting him in the head. Anybody would forget things. I'm sure there's plenty of ways, but, you know... Some are more legal than others. Some are more soul crushing than others. Ooh, a manga author. Oh, he's an assistant to a manga author, okay. Doing the inking and stuff. Not gonna pretend like I know all the terminology, but you know. Doing the stuff that anybody can do, basically. Well, you tried. I wouldn't call it laid back, but... Oh no, my harem life is hanging on by a thread. I must save it by any means necessary. Okay, that's not true. You know you love him. <laughs> uh, so clearly the answer is to get more money. That that would certainly foster this healthy relationship. <laughs> Cause you have confidence issues. Oh. Well, maybe now. 
You can relieve that frustration by a trip quick to the nearest stall. Bathroom stall. Huh. That would explain a lot. Wow. She is good. Is that... I mean, I assume it's somebody from the Hinata dorms. Kitsune? My first guess was Naruto, but I don't know why, because Kitsune is more likely. Well, that's... I feel like that won't work. Uh, I wouldn't call her great. A lot of rings. My god. Well, that confirms that's a Hinata Door member, at least. Because of that very specific number. Yeah, pretty sure that's Kitsune. And there we go. It's a little bit messed up. It's quite a trip. Just gotta skip past that. Because you're running past your friends. It's a little bit too late to die. Hey, you found your pond. I guess it should cleanse you now. Do you feel cleansed? Did you find a gold and silver sword in there? I had no idea he was a synchronized swimmer. By himself. Which is awkward. Ah, oh, there's the uh, professor, I think. The one is fine, come on in. I think he's the one we see in the opening, I'm not sure though. I'd have to look at them side by side. I thought we saw some kind of professor character in the opening that just never showed up in the show. Or the guy that was... I mean, there was one teacher guy earlier in the series, that might be him as well. Yeah, I think that confirms it is the same guy, yeah. I actually forgot about that until I started thinking about it. But yeah, we did see him once before. So yeah, I finally get back into the story. <coughs> Seta, he has a name. He clearly did not. Why don't you stop whispering and go ask him? Of course he got a cold. He was in the water for 10 seconds in a Japanese anime. That'll get you a cold. There she is, the blonde girl from the opening that's right next to him. I'm waiting to meet her. I was invited, Miss Wasp. <sighs> so, father, okay. Well, you usually when a van's rocking, it implies something different, but. Not by me, me and this naked boy were just doing things in the van. Yeah, that's the interpretation there. Uh. I'll just call him Seta, it's easier. Sara. Oni chan. Well, you know, he's working on it. Yeah, him especially. It's much better than being a manga assistant, I assure you. That's a that's a red flag, Gator. I'll think about this. That's not very specific. I want numbers here before I sign anything. I think she's a bit salty. Even though she's still hugging him. It's kind of funny. Uh. 
Well, they're back at it, right behind his back. So she is familiar with him. <laughs> well, I bet. No surprises there. It's weird seeing her in a uniform. <laughs> You might want to wipe that blush off your face before you see him, though. Go away, flies. Send by. Yeah, she'll probably find out eventually. Meanwhile, Kitaro's in there, busy coming, becoming a man. That's shitting and grin. Wow, Naru, where'd you come from? A cheerleader? Why are you a cheerleader now that I'm complaining? I guess that's one way to make money. I approve. Yeah, I agree. It's pretty good. I feel like it should show off more midriff, but aside from that, it's fine. It's too early. Don't mind that. Get out just in there with another girl doing who knows what alone. <laughs> Wow, throwing water at her in a cheerleader in uniform. I feel like I feel like I've underestimated how great you are, Kitsune. <laughs> well, I feel like being a wet cheerleader is an asset. Your your closed eyes. It's, she's gonna see him anyway. <laughs> Well, maybe. Probably not. You just take off this clothes right there. He'd seen I thought it'd be funny to throw water at me. Like everyone just converging here. We just need Hina. We just need uh, Shinobu and Sue to show up. I yeah, you two should totally go to the locker together. I don't feel like a cosplay event with one of them looking like a Miko and the other one looking like a cheerleader. Nice. <laughs> uh, I'm on the verge of shipping Naruto and Matoko. Be careful. <laughs> Apparently, Kisuna wants me to ship her with Naruto, and even Matoko's getting in behind that. I'll just ship Naru with everyone, that solves, that solves it. <laughs> what am I watching, Matoko says in her head. Very nice crotch movements. You know, get you pregnant. <laughs> uh, I mean, why wouldn't you want to hug a wet cheerleader, really? Life goals right there. <laughs> like Matoko just says nothing about this, just blushes a lot. That's pretty cool. I don't think uh, Wasp is as interested. Okay, that was uncalled for. Ugh. You really should tell him what she's doing. That's kind of too far for a prank. Well, he had finished a round with multiple guys, so... I'm sure she worked up a sweat. Oh. Good luck, Naru. Wow, Naru looking good. Gotta get a better look over. Yep. I mean, I could tell it was Naruto from a distance, but 
He looks oddly cute in that. <sighs> My god, that's cute. Os, os, os. Yeah, I don't blame it. I kind of want to capture after that, too. It looked like fun to me, and she was cute, so... What's the problem? Is that really your issue here? <laughs> oh, the maid cafe. This is not Joshiraku. That's good. That's... Uh, that's a little bit weird, but... Tokyo Yu is quite the school. Oh, nice. A rollerblade maid cafe? That's not like a disaster waiting to happen, but I'll, I'd go to it. Brazen. I wouldn't mind Nara going after my south half, though. Why not? Girls and banana can kind of go hand in hand. Just ask Sue, who is right there, actually. That makes sense. That ancient looking keyboard. I'm sure she's the only one that hasn't really showed up. Sounds fun. And yet she has all the bananas. Man, she really doesn't want anyone to... Okay, yeah, because that's where... That's where... Guitar was so. You know, if it is faded, you can't stop it. Yeah, you definitely been not doing. I don't know if she's been doing too much or too little thinking, honestly. Yeah. It... <sighs> <sighs> no, it's the other way around. Uh, I doubt he's the only person in the world that smokes, you know? <laughs> Very dramatic. Is she going to meet him? Or will something inter interrupt like Kitsune? Right on cue. <laughs> you know, if I was Naruto, I would legit start to think that Kitsune had a thing for me. <laughs> No means no. And here we go. There's no time for you two to be cuddling in front of me. <laughs> She's like, Keaton has been weird all day, save me. Oh, well, in that case, yeah, hold on tight. And then Matoko sees this. It's not what it looks like. Old tricks. He's just hugging his friend. <laughs> Calm down, Matoko. Very confused, Naru. I like that she just has a bucket of water whenever she needs one. Ah! Don't break her neck. <laughs> This is my Naru, I'm taking her home. Well, it's a much better practical joke than the blonde lollies, so... 
Where she just breaks expensive stuff and blames it on someone else. Ugh, I barely survived that bucket of water attack. If he's smart, he'll leave. I would not want to work with that child. Well, that same fortune teller kind of ruined everything, so... Well, people got in my way. <sighs> One way to find out, go visit. I'm sure she'll appreciate that, considering the actions of this episode. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not sure exactly how old she is, but she's probably young enough for it to be fine. Uh, I'm sorry I ran away, I just, I really need money. So that was the 14th episode of Love Hina. And this episode, the main issue is, hey, we need money. Because apparently they've been partying non-stop and just throwing that money out the window like it's nothing. So pretty much if they want the dorms to continue to have little things like power and water, running water and stuff like that, everybody has to chip in a little bit. Specifically 10,000 yen, I believe, is what they specified. Now, that meant everyone had to get a, some form of part-time job. And the ones we focused on the most were probably Naru and Keitaro. Keitaro, I think the first thing he went for was to be a manga, like, assistant. Pretty much, because that's, uh, it's a way to make a bit, quick bit of cash. You know, as long as you have the skill set to do it. Now that I know how difficult it is, actually, I never actually tried it myself, but... I imagine you at least have to be somewhat skilled in order to do it properly. Uh, anyway. He, he did that, but that was too much for him after a while, and he kind of quit that. And he ran to a fortune teller who kind of sucked away more money from him and gave him terrible advice, which turned out to be Kitsune to absolutely nobody's surprise. You could even see a few, like a little bit of her hair sticking out of the hood in certain shots if you pay attention. But anyway, then he decided to. Well, then he ran into At the Pond, so I guess in a way it did sort of work out. He went at the Pond where he met the teacher that. I believe that's the same teacher that not only he met before, but also the one that Naruto made a. or whatever a promise with back in the day. So yeah, he had a bit of a part-time job for him to do, although it wasn't a very good one because mostly pretty much entirely, entirely because of the blonde child with him that was very possessive of Papa and just very uh, aggressive towards uh, Keitaro, just attacking him, breaking stuff and blaming it on him. You know, just the usual obnoxious brat type stuff. So yeah, also you also had Naru stuff, which was usually she did various jobs to make money, like being a cheerleader, a wet cheerleader, thanks to Kitsune. So, probably the best thing Kitsuna did this episode. As well as, uh, whatever that cheer squad thing was. I'm not sure what you would even call that. But she did that as well. She Although the best thing she did was probably the rollerblading cafe thing. That was a lot of fun. And yeah, Kitsuna pretty much spent the bulk of the episode trying to get, uh, to try to not to ruin this thing. This, uh, three-way interesting dynamic thing between Naru, Kitaro, and the teacher. I want to say his name was Sara. I don't really remember exactly, but, you know, the smoking teacher. My favorite little scene in the episode was probably just Kitsune, like, cuddling up close to, uh, to Naru while Matoko watched when Naru was wet and in her chili dinner from doing this. So Matoko just kind of stood there, watching, enjoying the show, blushing, kind of collapsing after a while. Because Matoko, uh, I don't know, if I had to pick one character to be a Yuri character, it would probably be Matoko. Partially because of her hatred of men. Uh, I guess that's probably a big part of it. You know, she usually associates with women, so... It kind of makes sense that that yuri is scene, she would be the one to watch and enjoy that. As well as the audience watching and enjoy it. I know I enjoyed it, to be sure. But yeah, it was pretty entertaining just to see Kitsune desperately trying to keep this, uh, keep Naru from meeting the teacher. I mean, eventually they'll meet him. I mean, even near the end of the episode, he was talking about, Hey, Kitsune, it's been a while since I've seen her. I wonder if she's still at the Hinata dormitory. I should probably... I mean, I think they call it the Hinata apartment, so I don't know why I keep calling it the dormitory, but... It's, it's whatever. So he'll probably stop by eventually. We'll, we'll get them eaten eventually. It just keeps an eye desperately trying to to, to... to delay it, to prolong it. And she actually pretty much met everyone in this episode, like Sue with her bananas, Shinobu working at the 
the, I don't want to say cafeteria, you know, the, the lunch area. And because pretty much, you know, like also met Matoko doing her own thing, tossing guys around, you know, as she does. That was pretty much the episode, and yeah, in the end, Kenjaro had to do a bit more manga since there work to, to get his portion of it. As usual, everybody just being mean to Kenjaro. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if Kenjaro was a very depressed character, considering everything he has to go through in this show. Uh, but yeah, between getting randomly punched by Naro for any and all mistakes he makes, getting abused by a lolly that he doesn't even know that well, you know, hostile work conditions anytime he tries to make money, other members of the dorm trying to scam money out of him, uh, you know, pretty much it's it's a rough life for Kitaro is kind of what I'm getting at here. Thank you for watching, and thank you Snoki, the dragon of Oshu, as well as everyone else, for doing what you can to support the channel. It means a lot to me, and I hope we can continue to grow the channel together. If you want to do more to support the channel, then you can become a patron on my Patreon and get cool rewards like early access to certain videos. Have a good one.